Hey guys, uh, happy weekend. We have two topics for you. Uh, the first topic is we will go over the current normalized flux graph of Tabistar for today, the 15th of July, and we'll do this by showing you a current graph provided by Dr. Tabitha Boyajian. We will also discuss the elephant in the room, which is namely the increasing error that is being observed in the normalized flux graphs and what we plan to do about it. So this is the normalized flux graph provided by Dr. Tabitha Boyajian. The red data points are from an observatory in Hawaii and the blue data points are from an observatory in Spain. This data is taken in the R band. So this is the current flux level circled in red and it shows that we are still down approximately 0.5% from nominal flux levels. But as you will see now in our second topic, we really are at full nominal flux level. This is the elephant in the room that we need to talk about next. So for our last topic, let's discuss what's really going on and correctly address the issue from this point going forward. So we have shown this set of flux data points of Tabby Star from AAVSO in an earlier video. And the red curve shows the downward acceleration of the long-term dimming of Tabby Star. As the acceleration of the long-term dimming continues to progress, it is quickly becoming the predominant feature of Tabby Star. And it is making the nominal line in the normalized flux graphs more and more inaccurate as the flux levels drop faster and faster. In other words, the acceleration is becoming more noticeable on shorter time scales and hence should now be incorporated into our flux graphs since they are starting to look a little bit wacky because the flux curves are not quite going back up to the stagnant nominal line. So to make these graphs meaningful and more accurate to you, our subscribers, we need to incorporate or uh, integrate a real normalized flux curve that is matching the accelerated long-term dimming curve. So using this set of data points is probably our best option to getting a good estimate on the current acceleration rate of the long-term dimming. This is the slope of the last 150 days just prior to the two short-term dimming events that happened in May and June of this year so as not to uh, contaminate the long-term dimming slope with these uh, short-term set of dips. So two months ago, the long-term dimming acceleration fell 2% in 150 days. That is quite a bit more than what we calculated in an earlier video and comes out to about 0.40% per month. Guys, this is huge and actually surprised that other people have not caught on just yet. So let's revisit today's flux graph. We know from the previous graph that the normalized flux curve is not a horizontal static line. As a matter of fact, it's not even a line. It's a downward sloping accelerating curve. So from our previous calculation of the current slope of the accelerating flux curve at 0.40% per month and fitting this curve to this 71 day duration graph, we have this corresponding nominal flux curve shown in blue. This is the nominal flux curve that we should use to compare our current and past flux levels to and not the horizontal one. Notice that today's flux measurement is right on this adjusted nominal flux curve. Uh, notice that everything seems to make sense now. Flux levels return to the new normalized flux curve and we have actually recovered long time ago from the last dip as you'll see here. So from now on, we will superimpose the latest long-term dimming acceleration curve as the normalized flux curve so that we can properly evaluate for short-term dips and recoveries. Well, that's all we have for today. Enjoy your weekend and take care, guys.